Hello students, welcome back to Kaushik Biology Tutorial. In previous two videos, we studied two Mendelian disorder, color blindness and hemophilia. In today's lecture, we have to study the other three important Mendelian disorder, the sickle cell anemia, phenylketonuria and thalassemia. So first we have to start with the first Mendelian disorder that is sickle cell anemia. Now see sickle cell anemia is a type of autosome linked recessive disease. Now autosome linked recessive disease means okay it involves the recessive allele which present on autosomes. Understood? Okay that means here the recessive allele okay gets mutated and that mutated allele okay recessive allele present on the autosome. Now sickle cell anemia okay is a type of blood disorder. Now here the mainly the genes okay which gets defected that is recessive allele which gets defected okay present on the chromosome number 11 and we know that the in human okay there are 22 pairs of autosomes are there and out of these 22 pairs okay mainly these alleles okay are present okay on the 11th pair chromosome. Now here we have to <coughs> describe okay the mainly two alleles that means the mainly sickle cell anemia okay is controlled by the two alleles that is a pair of allele. Now here the normal allele okay is represented by HB capital A and defected allele is represented by HB small s or capital S we can say that. That means here the two alleles are there. Now for these two alleles okay three genotypes are possible. Now the first genotype okay that means here on the pair of 11th chromosome on one chromosome and on the second chromosome that is both chromosome okay possess the normal allele that means HB capital A HB capital A and therefore we can say that the person okay is unaffected or normal. The second genotype okay in which the on the, one of the 11th chromosome there is a normal allele while on the second 11th chromosome there is defected or the mutated allele is there and therefore the genotype becomes HB capital A HB capital S okay which represent the carrier or heterozygous individual while the third genotype okay which represent on both the 11th chromosome okay there are defected alleles are present or mutated alleles present and therefore the genotype will be HB capital S HB capital S and therefore okay the individual okay is affected or we can say disease that means the individual is suffered with sickle cell anemia. Now say how this defect that is the sickle cell anemia is caused. So when we consider the normal allele and defected allele so here what occurs now mainly in normal allele okay when we consider the hemoglobin so hemoglobin is mainly made up of the two alpha chain and two beta chain. Now when we consider the gene okay which codes for the beta globin in that okay the sequence of that gene okay coded for some amino acid and here mainly normal gene okay the sixth amino acid out of this sequence okay is glutamic acid that means when we consider the normal gene that means HBA allele in that okay the beta globin chain okay consists the glutamic acid at 6th position but because of the point mutation what happened this glutamic acid is replaced by valine amino acid and because of that okay what happened the hemoglobin okay becomes defected or we can say that the hemoglobin or resulting hemoglobin okay is affected understood that means in sickle cell anemia mainly what happened your gene okay which called for the beta globin chain okay consists of the glutamic acid at the sixth position but due to the point mutation this glutamic acid is replaced okay by valine amino acid and due to that okay your hemoglobin molecule okay gets affected or we can say that the mutated or the affected hemoglobin molecule is now produced. Now the substitution of this amino acid okay in the globin protein results due to the single base substitution that means the point mutation at the sixth codon. Now see earlier we studied the genetic codon. Now when we consider glutamic acid so this glutamic acid okay is coded by the genetic code GAG. But here due to this point mutation or the single base substitution what happened the A is replaced by U and therefore okay now the genetic code becomes GUG. 
and this code GUG is now codes for the another amino acid that is valine. That means in normal sequence, okay, the GAG is there which codes for glutamic acid. But due to the single mutation, now this GAG codon, okay, becomes GUG. And now this GUG, okay, is codes for valine. That means glutamic acid now replaced by valine amino acid. The mutant hemoglobin molecule undergo polymerization under low oxygen tension. That means when the oxygen concentration is low in our body, then this mutant hemoglobin undergo polymerization reaction. And because of that, the shape of RBC will change. Now when we consider the normal shape of RBC, then it is of biconcave shape. Okay, but during this polymerization of mutant hemoglobin, the shape of RBC, that means from biconcave shape, it will change to the elongated sickle-like structure. And that type of RBC, okay, is said to be sickle-shaped RBC. Now, see, we have to understand this whole phenomena, okay, but see, consider here the normal HBA gene. Now, for that, we have to focus on the DNA sequence. Now, on DNA sequence, for the sixth amino acid, the sequence is CTC. Now, when DNA is transcribed into RNA, then what happened? The C, okay, binds with its complementary base G. T is binds with its complementary base A and C again binds its with its complementary base G and because of that on the mRNA the sequence will be GAG and this GAG okay is called for glutamic acid that means here your normal beta globin of hemoglobin is synthesized and because of that the shape of RBC okay is remain biconcave but if the defect okay occurs in this DNA sequence so here what happens see now the CTC that means the code for the 6 amino acid now here what happened the T is replaced by A. Now here T is replaced by A and because of that what happened when this DNA is transcribed into RNA now the A is binds with its complementary base U and because of that okay on RNA the sequence will be GUG in place of GAG. Now this GUG code okay for the another amino acid that is valine that means here we can say that the glutamic acid which is present in sixth position okay is now replaced by the valine amino acid and under low oxygen concentration okay what happened the polymerization of this hemoglobin takes place and the shape of RBCs become sickle shape clear so that is the sickle cell anemia now the next Mendelian disorder is phenylketonuria now phenylketonuria is also autosome linked recessive disease that means it also involves the recessive allele okay which present on the autosomes now here in phenylketonuria what happened the mainly the individual which is affected by phenylketonuria is not able okay to synthesize a specific enzyme that is known as the phenylalanine hydroxylase which converts phenylalanine into tyrosine that means if the person is affected by phenylketonuria that means Okay, we can say that the now phenylalanine is not converted into tyrosine. Okay, and this defect occurs okay due to the defect in gene PAH. Okay, that means now this gene PAH gene okay mainly which codes for that enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase okay present on number of chromosome twelve. Okay, so now to understand this one okay consider the normal PH gene okay codes for the synthesis okay for one specific enzyme that is phenylalanine hydroxylase now in presence of this enzyme what happened your phenylalanine is converts into tyrosine but now if the defect occurs okay in this PAH gene which we can say that the mutant or mutated PH gene so if the PH gene gets mutated then what happened it is not able to synthesize phenylalanine hydroxylase and in absence of this hydroxylase enzyme what happened the phenylalanine do not converse into tyrosine and because of that the phenylalanine okay gets accumulated okay in blood in the form of phenylpyruvic acid and other derivatives and due to this accumulation okay what happened it causes okay the mental retardation okay as well as this <laughs> the accumulated products okay there is phenylpyruvic acid and other derivatives okay are not easily absorbed by the kidney and because of that okay what happened <clears throat> during the urination okay these compounds okay are released with the urine 
so that is the phenyl ketonuria now the next one is thalassemia now thalassemia is also autosome linked recessive disease that means here also the defected or the mutated allele okay present or recessive allele present on autosome now this defect okay is caused okay due to the either mutation or deletion okay which ultimately result in reduced rate of synthesis of one of the globin chain that means here we have to focus on hemoglobin structure now when we consider hemoglobin structure so hemoglobin consists two alpha chain and two beta chain and these alpha and beta chains are nothing but they are made up of alpha globin proteins and beta globin proteins now these proteins are coded okay by specific genes now if any mutation or the deletion occurs in these genes then what happens the rate of the synthesis of these globin proteins or alpha and beta chains okay will decrease and that is the major symptom of thalassemia now see this causes the formation of abnormal hemoglobin okay molecules resulting into anemia now it is a different from the sickle cell anemia okay now generally in anemia what happened the it caused the destruction of rbc okay and that is the characteristics of this disease thalassemia okay that means here what happened the mainly your genes which are responsible okay for the synthesis of alpha and the beta chain or alpha and beta globin proteins okay gets mutated or deleted and because of that okay the rate of synthesis will decrease which responsible okay for the synthesis of abnormal hemoglobin okay and that results okay in one of the another disease okay that is known as anemia now here when we consider thalassemia so thalassemia has two types alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia now here the name is given okay which type of chain okay or which type of proteins okay gets affected due to the mutation or deletion of genes okay and based on that okay the thalassemia has two types alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia so first we have to start with alpha thalassemia so alpha thalassemia is controlled by two closely linked gene that is hba gene and hba2 that means there are two genes hba1 and hba2 and these both genes okay are located on chromosome number 16 now if that means now see when we consider 16th number chromosome pair that means there are two 16 number chromosomes in a one pair now on both chromosomes okay hba1 gene and hba2 genes are there that means when we consider the pair of 16 chromosome there are four hba genes are there that means two hba1 and two hba2 now out of these four genes on 16 chromosome okay if mutation or deletion occurs okay in any genes then it directly affects the rate of synthesis of alpha chain clear now suppose out of four suppose the only one gene okay gets mutated or deleted that means it not di affect okay enough to the rate of synthesis of hemoglobin but out of four suppose three genes gets mutated or deleted then what happen it more affects the rate of synthesis that means the more genes affected the less alpha globin molecule produced okay and that is the alpha thalassemia okay so for alpha thalassemia you have to remember which genes involved okay so there are two genes hba1 and hba2 and both genes okay are located on the chromosome number 16 now consider the second type that is beta thalassemia so in beta thalassemia the gene which is responsible for the synthesis of beta globin protein okay is hbb and that is located okay on chromosome number 11 now if any mutation or the deletion occurs okay in hbb gene okay then it directly affect the rate of synthesis of the globin chain okay so that is the beta thalassemia that is beta thalassemia is controlled by a single gene hbb on chromosome 11 of each parent and occurs okay due to the mutation of one or both the genes now see so when we consider the thalassemia and sickle cell anemia so both are the blood disorders okay and in both and disorder okay mainly the hemoglobin gets affected so how can we differentiate thalassemia and sickle cell anemia so in sickle cell anemia what happened due to the single base pair substitution or during due to the point mutation okay the glutamic acid is replaced by valine and because of that the affected hemoglobin molecule is synthesized 
that means here what happened the hemo the rate of synthesis not gets affected that means hemoglobin molecules are synthesized okay in proper amount but the defected hemoglobin molecules are produced but when we consider thalassemia so here in thalassemia what happened the rate of synthesis of hemoglobin molecule affected that means here the less number of hemoglobin molecules are produced therefore we can say that the thalassemia okay is the quantitative problem that means here the number of your hemoglobin molecules gets affected okay but when we consider sickle cell anemia then sickle cell anemia is qualitative problem where the structure of hemoglobin gets affected so see the thalassemia differs from sickle cell anemia in that the former one that is the thalassemia is a quantitative problem of synthesizing too few globin molecules but when we consider the latter one that is the sickle cell anemia then sickle cell anemia is a qualitative problem of synthesizing an incorrectly functioning globin molecules okay so that is the difference between thalassemia and sickle cell anemia so these are the five mendelian disorder okay which we have to study okay in chapter 5 out of this five the first two okay that is hemophilia and second one is yes color blindness so hemophilia and color blindness are sex linked recessive disorder while the remaining three okay that is sickle cell anemia then thalassemia and phenylketonuria these three are the autosome linked recessive disease so you have to remember this examples okay of autosome linked recessive disorder and the sex linked recessive disorder okay so if you have any doubt please comment and ask me thank you for watching video please like and share my video and subscribe my channel kaushik biology tutorial